Right, good afternoon. Um, I am Michelle Corbin uh, for Fits on the Go from the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Um, today we have with us Dr. Renato Lopez. Um, he just presented the late drinking trial um, at the American College of Cardiology uh, Conference 2019. Uh, we are really um, um, happy to have you uh, with us, Dr. Uh, Renato Lopez. Thank you very much for the invitation. A pleasure to uh, participate. Um, everything that is fellows related, uh, I'm really pleased to participate and help. Thank you. So let's start first by talking about the Augustus trial that you presented this morning. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about the um, design of the trial um, and the results um, of this trial. So the Augustus trial basically uh, is a trial that we try to answer two questions. Because in this field of antithrombotic therapy for patients with ACS and AFib or PCI, um, it's a challenging group of patients because the patients have to use anticoagulant for the AFib, they need to use a dual antiplatelet for the ACS or PCI, um, and when you combine those therapies, it becomes a challenge. And there have been some other studies trying to minimize risk of bleeding with some strategies. But we felt that we wanted to answer two questions. Uh, we needed to answer two questions. So first is we wanted to test a Pixaban versus VKA, vitamin K antagonists. And second, the role of aspirin, because aspirin is such an important piece now that we wanted to have a head-to-head -head comparison on aspirin versus placebo. But to answer these two questions in a single trial, the only way to do it is if you do a two-by-two -two factorial design study. So that's what we did. So the trial basically enrolled patients with AFib with an indication for oral anticoagulation and also who had a recent ACS mm -hmm. or a PCI where there was a need for a P2I12 inhibitor for at least six months. And then we randomized patients to a Pixaban, five milligrams twice daily, which is a dose approved for stroke prevention in atrial fibrillation, mm -hmm. or VKA with a target INR uh, between two and three. And this was our first randomization factor. This was open label. But then we went to our second randomization factor, which was aspirin or placebo. And that piece was double blind. So basically, we have the orange coagulation randomization and then the aspirin placebo randomization. And our primary endpoint was bleeding at six months. Okay. That's great. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit now about the results of the trial? Um, and um, how would you envision this affecting uh, clinical practice? Because this has been an, an unanswered questions um, and multiple um, uh, physicians do multiple uh, interventions after a PCI. So triple therapy versus dual therapy, right. uh, vitamin, K, uh, vitamin K antagonist versus uh, NOAX. And, right. um, you know, I think this is a great trial that uh, would inform us uh, more about how to move forward this uh, issue. Correct. So, uh, let's start with the apixaban and VKA comparison. So we showed that for bleeding, apixaban reduced the rate of major or clinically relevant non-major bleeding by 31%. This was highly statistically significant. Then we also showed that apixaban reduced death or hospitalization by 17%, highly statistically significant. And for ischemic events, death or ischemic events, the composite of death or ischemic events, we show no difference between apixaban and VKA patients, although we did find a lower rate of stroke and hospitalization among patients treated with a with a Pixaban when compared to VKA. So those were the results of one comparison or one randomization. The other part of the trial, we showed that adding aspirin actually increased the risk of bleeding by 89%. So a tremendous increase in bleeding risk with aspirin. When you look at death or hospitalization, there is no difference between, between aspirin and placebo for death or hospitalization. And finally, when you look at death or ischemic events, we also did not find any significant difference in the death or ischemic events between aspirin or placebo. Uh, and also we did not find any significant difference in the components of the ischemic events. So that's great. So um, 
how do you think this will translate into practice? So, um, should we be doing uh, NOAX and a P2Y12 uh, inhibitor after a PCI? Um, is this the most favorable strategy from a bleeding standpoint as compared to an ischemic uh, risk? Yeah. So, as you well said, it's a very complex uh, puzzle, if you will. And I think Augustus answer of, uh, or adds a very important piece to that puzzle. I also think that there are so many different permutations. The physicians need some good randomized trials to guide them. We have almost 3 million different permutations to treat these patients. And I think with Augustus show, and if we look at the totality of data, I think that for the majority of patients with AFib, with an ACS or PCI, I think using a regimen with a NOAC plus a P2I12 inhibitor without aspirin should be enough is the safest option and without a, an appearance high cost in ischemic events. Having said that, I'm not saying that we should never use aspirin again. I think we're going to be learning more that we might find a few groups of patients that maybe a little bit longer of aspirin might be useful. We haven't uh, done those analyses yet. Sure. But for the majority of patients, I think that main lesson learned is that less is more and therefore one NOAC plus a P2I12 inhibitor should be the preferred regimen. Okay. That's great. And do you think that if a patient is already on Coumadin um, for AFib um, after a PCI for ACS or uh, um, a, st a stable ischemia, um, would, would we be changing those patients to a NOAC uh, plus a P2Y12 um, or should we keep them on a, a vitamin K antagonist in addition to a P2Y12? I think we have data enough now to switch those patients over an OAC. In, in the Augustus trial, 50% of patients were using an oral anticoagulation therapy before entering the study, and of those, 35% were VKA. Mm -hmm. And the majority were, um, of the patients were using warfarin uh, of those VKAs. So, and they switched, half of them went from a VKA to a Pixaban, and the benefits were still there. So we haven't seen any significant interaction. So I think we have enough data that we should go with the safest regimen, and that includes a P2I12 inhibitor and an OAC without aspirin. Yeah, that's great. I think the, the results of the trial definitely back up this, uh, this switch. And in addition to the uh, move towards, you know, no wax and AFib regardless if they don't have contraindications for this now. Um, now, um, how fast do you think that this will be translated into practice? You know, after trials, it takes a little bit of time for um, clinical practice to adapt uh, to the trial results. Um, what's your um, thoughts in terms of translation into practice now? You're right, there is always a lag between the evidence and the clinical uh, implementation of those results or the evidence. But in this case, I think it's going to be really fast because actually it's already happening. I think people were already feeling the need to do less in terms of antithrombotic therapies because of the bleeding complications that I think people are going to be jumping on these results. I think people were waiting for those results. I think we are lucky to have robust results that fit what, what everybody was expecting. So in that regard, I think that um, it should be implemented quite fast. Um, congratulations again on a great trial. Um, what do we, a final word for the uh, uh, fellows in training? Uh, again, thanks for this initiative. I think fellows are always the engine of any institution because you guys are the ones who are really motivated us to keep doing things more and more, better and better, and together with you guys, we can get things better. We, I had a fellow working in this trial with me. Uh, Amit Vora was a fellow working with me. I had other fellows helping with the adjudication, so it's always a pleasure to work with the fellows and enjoying the fellowship time because it's one of the best time of your lives. Thank you so much. It was a real pleasure having this discussion with you, and we look forward um, to more great trials um, from your team. You. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Lopez. For more videos like this, please visit uh, youtube.com slash fits on the go.